Blow YouTube, this is Dakota from Bowtie Media, and everyone is leaving Monster Cat. Why? I did, they're not, actually. They're not leaving Monster Cat. Well, what do I mean by that? Why did I start it like that? Well, that's because uh, recently uh, the community has realized that Karma Field's discography is off Monster Cat now. The uh, the music player no longer has Karma Field's on it. Can't find any Karma Field's music. It's not under it if you go to, like, YouTube copyright stuff. And, uh, yeah, no no more Karma Field's on Monster Cat. Uh, similar to what happened with uh, both Tristam and Haywire in the past, too. Uh, but, you know, that is... It's just business. It's, it's actually just how it works. Honestly, the whole reason I wanted to do this video and set it up the way I did is because when I was a bit younger, I was a little bit more naive on uh, what the inner workings of a label was and why artists seemingly left a label. Why did Tristam remove all of his music off of Monster Cat? Why did Haywire remove all his stuff off Monster Cat? And I just, I just assumed that there was some falling out, that there was some bad blood, that there's no more relationship anymore between the two, and uh, that just isn't true. And so with Karma Fields now having uh, taken all of his stuff off of Monster Cat, I uh, sort of wanted to make this video and just say why and get to the real reasoning behind why this is happening. Uh, because in all honesty, I don't think the artists and labels talk about it enough um, to the average consumer of music uh, to understand what's going on. And so uh, hopefully I can fill in some gaps for you guys. With a label like Monster Cat that's been around for so long and felt like a kind of ma and pa kind of record for so many people, including myself, that feel like there's just, this is like a family, this is a home, they, and they still often feel like a smaller label to a lot of us. Um, it's just a notion and a reminder that that's just not the way things are anymore. Monster Cat is one of the biggest electronic music labels out there, and uh, yeah, a lot of this is is just business. It's just how the things things go. It's just how things go in the industry. So what's really happening? Well, when an artist chooses to release a song on a label, 99.9% um, .9 of the time they sign a licensing agreement, which allows the label to own, kind of publish, market, all that kind of stuff, uh, do that to a song or album or EP, whatever it would be. Obviously, all that stuff is done in collaboration with the artist and label, but for the most part, the uh, label just sort of owns the music now. So there is a time where it comes where these agreements are just done and they're finished their time is up and that's why an artist like karma fields tristam haywire can just take their music off of monster Cat. i reached out to john or going quantum from monster Cat, and uh he put it simply just said that artists sign licensing deals for a certain time and if they decide to terminate the agreement after the term it's their legal right and have the ability to end the agreement in that case they would need to take down the release and they can redistribute the release however they please so really it's as simple as that it's just a licensing agreement that has become terminated by the artist. They say, no, nope, we're taking it off Monster Cat. We're going to do it our own way now. See, this is the thing that confused me quite a bit when I was younger, when I was still making a bunch of random videos here and there for like camps or random promo stuff here and there. I would reach out to an artist and be like, hey, can I use your song for this video? It's I'm not making any money off it or whatever, but can I use the song? And they would say, sort of, yes, but you have to actually ask the label. You, they can't actually say anything. They're like, they'd say more often than not, yeah, I'm. it'd be fun for you to use it, but you have to reach out to the label to get permission. It's just a weird mechanic of the industry and a bit of a background of the industry that I think a lot of people don't fully understand. And that's because they just don't know. I didn't know for years. I just assumed the artist just owned all the rights to their music. So when an artist gets that kind of licensing right for a track, uh, it's been typically, and at least to my understanding, uh, has been five, to 10 years has been the amount of time that uh, they have for sure the label has of the track. And uh, my understanding is a little bit later or earlier on in the like EDM sphere, five years was pretty common. And nowadays, I believe up to 10 or even 10 or more is, is quite common. Um, but yeah, so it's safe to assume with this Karma Fields release now that this last release being in 2016, uh, October 2016 with Sweat, that you would probably assume that it's a uh, six, maybe probably five year deal. And it's just over now. And Karma Fields goes, nope, I, I, I want to redistribute on my own now. The whole nuance of licensing agreements is actually the reason we see Taylor Swift be popping off with these Taylor's versions of new albums and songs and tracks from the vault and this kind of stuff, because now after years and years and years, she finally owns the rights to all these tracks. And it's a, actually a little bit more complicated than that. It's not quite black and white like that in her case. Um, but this is a great example of why we're seeing a mega superstar like Taylor Swift do this weird 
Taylor's version and have two versions of her own stuff up now. Everywhere. Obviously with larger artists and billion dollar labels, things are way more complicated than it is with a label like Monster Cat, but uh, it's essentially the same sort of uh, crux of the issue. So when an artist finally finishes a track, it's a fairly important decision for them if they're going to self-release and not go through a label or choose to give up that licensing rights for at least a few amount of years um, and have access to all of the resources and marketing and just teams that labels have. And that's why we see more often than not, uh, I would say probably like 90, 90%, 95% of times an artist will sign with a label because the pros definitely outweigh the cons. It was a big topic of conversation years ago. I can't remember what it was, but uh, also about royalty splits, about choosing a label that gives you good access to team resources, assets, all the kind of stuff, and the royalties. How much percentage of the track streaming are you actually getting in your pocket versus the label? My understanding back then was Monster Cat was a 50-50 split of the royalties with the artist and the label. And so I'm not sure what that is nowadays or if it's changed for artist per artist or release or whatever it is. But so it's the artist making that decision of do I take either 50% cut from all my streaming revenue and have the ability to post on a channel like Monster Cat or with a label Monster Cat and have access to these massive platforms? Or do I try to go solo release and use my own uh, natural growth and organic engagement? It's a real trade-off that artists have to decide time and time again with every new release. And that's why it's honestly really hard for artists to really make it nowadays because, I mean, streaming dishes out piddly squat royalties from my understanding and the game has changed so much where you really need to have a social media presence and you need to have all this backing of everything for each release every single every ep every album needs to have these grand stuff for you to actually do it and go well and so yeah, it's, it's, that's just the nature of the industry nowadays. When it comes to a label like Monster Cat, where it feels like your intimate ma and pa label, it, it, I get it, I get it, I get it, I get it. I get why people throw, not like throw a fuss, but sometimes they see comments like, oh, this is crazy, or this artist shouldn't have done that, or the label needs to keep them, or it needs to be this good relationship. Like, I, 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 I get it. I get that you want to see your favorite artist on your favorite label, and you want to see them work together all the time, but it's so much more complicated than just that. As a consumer, as a listener to all of the music, all of the labels, everything, I think we're so often easily caught in the idea and mindset of, oh, this can just be this way. It can just happen this way when there is so much more going on behind the scenes that we don't see. Before a release is even scheduled, there's so much that goes into prep and execution and everything. It's, 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 it's a lot. So when I see an artist like Carmen fields that is choosing to end their licensing agreements with a label that I love like Monster Cat. Part of me goes, yeah, that kind of sucks. I love that Karma Fields is on Monster Cat. Personally, I like it because I can use the music because I have Monster Cat Gold, and so I, I can use it copyright free. But uh, on the other hand, I'm excited to see what Karma Fields could maybe do with it and see if there's more to it, uh, see if there's a new rebirth, a recycle of the record too. Um, I'm just fascinated to see the handling of the releases going forward. But yeah, that's sort of all I wanted to talk about in this video, maybe clear up some confusion for those that are maybe not as aware of what happens on the behind the scenes of the industry. Um, and just a note that I also like know a little bit, but not much more than the average person. So take all this with a bit of grain and salt, a grain of salt. I, uh, I tried to do my research and try to look into as much as I could. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I don't know the in and outs of everything so much. So I don't know the ins and out of the Karma Fields relationship, the Tristam, Haywire, Monstrat. I just don't fully know. So um, yeah, just, <laughs> just note that this is... Not quite an opinion piece, but it's more of a, just a general conversation starter. So I'd love to hear what you have to say. Um, are you the person that's like, this was horrible. I don't want Karma Fields and Monster Cat splitting up. Or you're like, it doesn't matter to me. Because in the end, I think that's it for me personally. And the, like, the only thing it really affects for me now is that I just can't play the Karma Fields music and like bracket streams or stuff that I do. But other than that, it's just like... It's what it doesn't really affect me. But other than that, uh, yes, I'm Dakota from Bowtie Media, and I'll see you guys in another video.